we built a, a group of men and a team that know how to play with resiliency, composure, really we talked all week about how the discipline to execute um, in crunch times. And uh, they did that. They, dis they had disciplines. I thought that uh, you know, our first three points came on them jumping off sides and, and our kids were disciplined enough to stay on sides and we stole a drive there. Um, give Missouri a lot of credit. I think um, <laughs> Eli does a great job. And that team's hard to play. You got a, I can't even say three year starter quarterback. I don't know if that's exactly right, but he played against us here uh, three years ago. And they've got tremendous skill and great size on the defensive line. And so um, our kids played really hard. The difference in the game was probably kicking game this time. And, uh, and Woodrin coming through and used his returns uh, and some critical red area stops. And uh, that's what games come down to. You know, he actually said it during the week. Third down in the red area, we would look back on as being major critical spots. And they played well in red area defensively, and we played well in red area defensively. And <coughs> great team, great games, what the SEC is all about. And our reward is we get to do it again next week. So that's what the life in the SEC is. What about all opening it up? What about the uh, interception of uh, Nazem Stack Stackhouse? Can you see what you saw on that play and how important it was? In the Huge, game? biggest play in the game. It was, uh, Slow motion. We told him after the game we had to get a piano on his back. Because he, uh, he said he took out and he just knew he was going to score and he didn't realize how far he had to run. <laughs> he was out of breath about halfway. I thought Taylor Walker did a great job. Just a great example of having discipline to not um, block somebody or clip somebody in the back. And uh, I thought he did a great job there. You mentioned Peyton, but getting a career long in a really big situation, just what, what do you feel like that said? The fact that he was able to come through with that kick? Yeah, it shows we have a lot of faith in him, trust in him. I think the, 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 the toughest call I had all night was on fourth and five. You know, there's a lot of analytics that will tell you not to kick that field goal because a six point differential just tells them they get four downs when you just invited them to have four. Um, but I thought there's a chance we might have another chance at a field goal and three and three might make nine. But um, if we don't get if we don't hit the field goal or uh, we hit it and they go down and score, it's certainly a tough situation. You got to have confidence in the rest of your team they can stop them. We got about half of that third down back, and there was consideration there on fourth and five to go for it. But because of Peyton and what he's been able to do, we uh, we kicked it. Coach, I think I noticed Kamari last year in the slot. I guess, what, when did the decision to move him in there, and what does it do for your defense to have a guy that can go do that? Well, Kamari is a, 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 a talented football player, and uh, when he first got here as a freshman, we had times that we worked him in the slot and we cross trained because he's a matchup, really physical tackler, really tough guy, and. Uh, as we watched them during the week, we felt like we needed to have a weapon, uh, some answers in the slot. And uh, to do that, you got to have guys who can go out to the outside. And, you know, Dalen and, and, and uh, uh, Julian had to go out there and play. And, you know, they made some good plays. They had some really close uh, PIs and tough calls. And they had some really tough back shoulder throws. And when you take Kamari off in that boundary spot, you open yourself to those throws. So uh, we think we have good corners that can play. And, Mario allows us. We're lucky that we have defensive players versatile enough to try to match up to some things they did. Why do you think this, this team has been able to make the plays to keep you guys in the when you've had so many tight games? You know, I think they believe in our system. Um, we, we, have, we have built a culture of uh, competitive edge in the fourth quarter. We believe that we're the best conditioned and that we're going to win the game in the fourth quarter. We're going to rely on each other. You know, I got goosebumps down my back when they went down there and scored. And uh, Cedric Rampram was yelling at the defense to run off the field, run off the field, we got your back, we got your back, we're going to be fine. And they, they, Missouri put together a really good drive, kind of drove it down our throat and um, hit us on a lot of pass ball runs. And uh, Ced was telling those guys, jog it off, we're going to be fine. And there's, there's a lot of name leadership out there, man. We got some, some really positive leaders. Kirk, are these tight games, is, is the locker room seem pretty much the same in, in terms of <clears throat> uh, look, all games are going to be tight. I don't know. Like, y'all were back on, like, we're having tight. I mean, tight games are what you do in the SEC. I mean, that's the margin of victory. It is hard to win. Kiaris and Broderick just came up to me and said, Coach, it's hard to win. Make sure these guys enjoy it because they realize how hard it is, you know, across the NFL. It's hard, man. I mean, you, you're going to get every team's best shot. And I uh, thought our guys – played a really good football team tonight, and we practiced really well prepared for it. Um, I was proud of the way they played. I don't know if that answers your question, but the locker room's great. I mean, they, 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 they've been in these kind of battles.
you guys scored on your first four drives at halftime and then when you run the clock out there. What sort of changed with this offense, especially when going into the half, you have two, three and outs right before that? I don't know. I have to watch it and see. I can't really tell you what changed. I, I, I know that we have a, a potent offense. We have a lot of weapons. We have a lot of guys that can use. We got a guy that can get it to them. We got good pass protectors. We got good run blockers. You know, I didn't think we ran the ball or overly well in the first half or the second half. You now the second half had some some moments, and uh, you got to be able to control lines because you can't live your life in second long all game. And I thought we had a lot of second longs. They won first down more than we did, and uh, Mike did a good job. Staying with it, sticking with the plan. We were, we were very committed to the run when most teams would have abandoned it. Kirby Carter has had a couple of teams. scrambles. Can you talk about what that means when he's able to get those few yards in those situations and his poison in the second half? It's hard. Look at us. I mean, their quarterback was the leading rusher probably in the first half, and uh, it, it's it's tough on a defense when you cover everybody and he takes off. Um, their guy made it hard, and uh, our guy made it hard on them. The, the conversions he had with his feet are just. It makes you as a defense coordinator not want to call certain things, and it takes you out of your element. Kirby, uh, Carson actually said he almost had to learn how to play football again this year since it's been some months since he's taken a hit. What has he shown you um, this year that maybe you didn't know before or maybe you didn't know before? Or what's he affirmed to you? I, I, I say it often because everybody asks that question about – I just – I never – I always had a lot of confidence in Carson. I mean, Carson, he did all the things he's doing now. He did them in our practices. He did them against a – 2021 defense that may have been one of the top three defenses ever, and he did it every day out there. Like he would go against those guys and be like, "Man, this guy ain't flinching." Uh, so I've seen all these things before. If anything surprised me, it's probably his feet, because he didn't get to use those often in, in practices. You know, it's, it's like you can't hit him, so he takes off running. It's like we don't know if he'd have got it or not. But uh, his composure and his decision making and his Ability to change protections and know what defenses are doing. I mean, he, you got to give him a lot of credit. The first touchdown was probably all his. Mm -hmm. he, he saw something, made a change, and uh, did a great job. So did Vaughn go down with an injury? Any of those? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's a uh, tibia or a, it's, a, it's a fracture or something in the forearm. How do you feel like the linebackers, CJ and anyone else who got up here, played after he got hurt? Good and bad. They played before he got hurt. I mean, those guys have played all year, so. We need those guys to keep coming and uh, keep growing up, and uh, they've done a tremendous job. And uh, got a lot of respect for those young guys. They've worked for this opportunity, and they go out there and practice every day as hard as they can. And uh, and they're really good players, good football players. CJ and Raylan are, are very talented, and they got thrown in the fire tonight more than normal. Yeah, do you like the preparation process for these games, or do you like the games? Which which is more fulfilling, oh. fun, whatever. I, I, I like both. I mean, if you don't like it, I shouldn't do it. You know, it's like, uh, what am I doing this for? If I'm going to spend this many hours and countless hours up in the office till 10, 10.30 at night, come in at 7. I mean, there's a lot of preparation to go through. <coughs> it was fun to game plan, plan for this one because it was a little more chess match with them, the way they're playing. They're not traditional. You know, they, they get in some full line sets, and that's not the way everybody's 11 and 12. They were 10, and uh, we got to do some different things uh, with that. They, they, they create tough matchups. Uh, and they get the best personnel on the field when they do that. So I enjoy that part and I enjoy seeing the kids <coughs> play on game day. I enjoy the decision making process. As a head coach, I don't have to worry about calling it. I just gotta figure out, you know, what's our next what's our next play? What's our next uh, way to get an advantage? You matched uh, Coach Julie's home win streak now I think with twenty four. What does that mean to get that victory at Sanford Stadium? It means I have a lot of respect for Coach Dooley, so I want him to keep his name on there forever. You mentioned that drive where Missouri kind of ran the ball down your throat during the fourth quarter. Just what did you see from them that allowed them to have success on the ground, I guess, overall and in that drive? Tempo. Tempo. I mean, they didn't do anything that they haven't done all year. I mean, they didn't scheme us up. They went for ass. <laughs> Seems like they uh, might have wished a little bit in the first half, put a little cover zero. I guess what's the key to being successful or successful in offense, even when facing pressure like that? They bless us all game. I mean, it's what they do. They're, they're, they're aggressive. They come after you. They make you beat them, um, and they come hard. They, they, they got three sacks on a team that we had not given up many sacks, and I think they had up three sacks. So they're very aggressive. You got to have answers. We work hard on that. They know that. They they know your answers. So it's like it's a matter of it's a cat and mouse game of you know are you going to get a better answer than they got and respond to it and they won some and they lost some. Can you talk about getting number ten on Miss and your old buddy Lane Kiffin here next week? Yeah, uh, got a great team. I mean I. 
go get to work on them tomorrow. And a uh, lot of respect for what Lane's done and built there. He's a tremendous offensive mind. He's gone out and they're playing um, good defense now too. So uh, it'll be a hell of a matchup because they got a really good football team. Can you talk about what happened to Kamara when he went down? He just had his back spasm. I think he just wanted to get up and celebrate so everybody would cheer him. <laughs> 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 I noticed um, Stephen Sawyer wasn't out there today. Yeah, he wasn't with us for personal reasons. Larry, was that big game. He talked about uh, McConkie <clears throat> continued contribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, were you, what are you asking about that? If you can at least start on the play there. Awesome. I mean, great competitor. Uh, made, we finally completed the post for the first time all year. The, the, he drove in there and, and Lab went up and made a play. And, I thought Ra Ra had a chance for one early. I thought the guy might have got there early, but we didn't get the call. And then Ladd hit the one later. He, he made some people miss. I mean, the one play, we didn't block a guy. I mean, we, we threw bubble out there and, and didn't block it right. And uh, Ladd made him miss. And big play of the game is playmaker. Players make plays, and he did. Kirby Stankhouse said he hit at 18 miles an hour when he was pulling his No out. chance. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. I don't think he hit 18 miles an hour on his bike or a car. <laughs> 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 you say this was your toughest test of the season? They're all tough, bro. They're all tough. There's no difference. They're all tough. We talked all week about what you learned about your team last year when you guys played Missouri. What do you feel like you learned about your team in this year's game? All the same things. Um, we got a disciplined football team. They do what we ask. Uh, we don't get a lot of stupid penalties. Uh, they, they believe in each other. They believe that if they don't win the last moment, they'll win the next moment. And if you win enough moments, you, 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 you can be pretty good. And uh, we won enough moments tonight. What's the key to playing great defense in the red zone? Stop the run. Like, if you can stop the run, you're going to make them do what? Throw. If you have to throw with less area, because there's a back line back there, they don't give you seven for catching it behind it. So you can sit on routes and squat on things. It forces you run the ball. If you can't, it shows up big time in the red area. If you can't stop it, it shows up big time in the red area. I just wanted to ask about Marcus and his status after you were shaking up after that play. And if you, if you could have gone back in and you needed him, would he have gone back in? You know, I don't even know the answer to that. I didn't realize that he didn't go back in. I remember the play you're talking about, but I don't, I didn't get any uh, updates and uh, don't know. I, mean, I think he's okay. He was talking after the play, but I can't confirm that. How was the very different from last year to this year? I mean, obviously, it's really good team both times. You know, very similar. A lot of the same offensive plays. He went out and hired an offensive coordinator that brought some new wrinkles in. They're big defensively. Number six is a just grown man and uh, one of the hardest people to block in our league. Uh, and uh, they they are they are really good. They have a good football team. They play they play sound, good, everything. Special teams, they're sound. It's not like you go in going, ooh, I got them here. You're, you're, you're trying to create an advantage, and it's hard to get a great field goal kicker. I mean, well, no. When I'm stressed, do you feel like you guys are playing y'all's best ball, um, you know, in November? I don't know. I mean, I think we've gotten better. I think we've got to continue to improve. I thought we had a great week of practice Florida. We thought we had a really good week of practice this week. Um, you know, I expected to play well, and uh, I thought our kids came out and competed hard. Schrader obviously has a big day. What about, uh, I mean, concerns about running game or certainly <clears throat> tippy cap the way that guy ran and they blocked him? Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a great he's, he's a great runner, but they got a great scheme. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they know when to run the ball. They're not running the ball into loaded boxes, and, and they do a great job with the stretch game. I mean, they run the stretch as good as anybody in college football, and, uh, and they, they, they hurt us with it. So can, can, catch Pop, it. can Pop play in a cast? Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't know that. I'd have to go and see. I mean, I just got a text with the x-ray on it, so it's one of those that uh, I doubt that it's going to be able to. I don't, I don't know that. Some big catches from Oscar. Just what do you feel like he brings to this offense? Great kid, great competitor, blocks his tail off, works hard, made catches down the field today. Um, it's what we were recruiting for. I mean, Oscar Dunn's a good football player. Coach, we expect the red zone package with the Broncos to be more as well. Well, we saw a look we thought we liked. I uh, thought we liked it. I, I told Mike and him that, that he, he, you know, he gives us an extra dynamic there, and, and we, didn't, we didn't execute it very good. It wasn't his fault. And, uh, I'm just glad they used it because I, I trust Brock. He brings an extra dynamic to the game. How did Dom handle the week, and how do you think what it meant to him to get in the end zone against his old team? Oh, I know it meant a lot to him. There's a ton of players out there hugging him afterwards. He's such a great teammate and competitor that I know it meant a lot to him, but it meant a lot to them too. Uh, that can be emotional, and we talked about you know 
two things that cause you to lose discipline are loss of emotions and loss of fatigue. And you don't let fatigue set in because you lose discipline. You don't let emotion set in because you lose discipline. And he didn't do that today. And uh, I'm really proud of it. Let's take two more questions. Coach, we're disappointed right before half two minutes left. Y'all didn't take advantage of the opportunity to maybe go down and score some more points by the halftime. Absolutely not. Uh, we didn't let them take advantage of it either. So I mean, if we hurry up and punt it to them, they got more time. So the goal is to get a first down and score. If you don't do that, the goal is don't give them the ball. So am I disappointed we didn't quite convert? Yeah, but we, you know, he didn't call timeout either because he's sitting there thinking, oh, Lord, if I call timeout, I'm going to help him. And uh, then we kicked the ball to him, and, and they, didn't, uh, they didn't take advantage of it either. Uh, the fans were booing after you decided not to kind of go for it. How do you feel about that? Which time? At, at the end of the first half. They were booing it. The, the, I think the two minute mark he's talking about, where we we, we, we stalled out. But I'll be honest with you, I don't. I, I got to make decisions based on what wins games, not not what wins spreads. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>